Hey guys, Dr. Andre Pinesett here, the pre-med productivity expert. Uh, in today's session, we're going to be talking about I didn't get into medical school, now what? Uh, in this session, you're going to learn the five things you need to do now, today, if you want to get into medical school uh, during next admission cycle. So, we'll get right to it. Step one, you're not a failure. Realize that. That's all step one is, is recognize your life is not over, you're not dead, you're not a failure, you still may have a chance. But you don't have time to waste in pity me pines or having a pity party for yourself or going around telling everyone how all your dreams are dead. Instead, you need to get to the rest of these steps and start making your dreams a reality. So don't feel bad for yourself. Take a deep breath. It's going to be okay and get to work. All right. Step two is to evaluate your application. And this is a two part step. Um, the first part is to actually evaluate the application in itself and say, did you sell yourself? Did you sell yourself? This is a big problem that students have is they cut and paste from their resume or their CV and that becomes their application. But everyone's gonna have about the same activities. The difference is how you sell it. And I always tell students as I'm going through their applications is I don't care about what you actually did. I care, or sorry, excuse me. I don't care about what your position or title typically is. I care about what you actually did. And um, in advertising it's called uh, instead of selling the steak, you sell the sizzle. So I don't care if you're a class president, the class president runs meetings and is in charge of the budget. I care about what you did in those meetings. So take time and tell me, you know what? When I was president, our meetings were awesome. We raised this money, we did this, because I did this. That's what selling your application is. And I'll do a whole video on that, so you can see that later. But that's the first part, did you sell yourself? Because that's a big shortcoming in a lot of people's applications. The second thing you can do, and it's, the biggest self-sabotage I see, and it's the number one reason, I, it's the number one easy fix for a rejection from medical school, and that's submitting your application late. You're hearing it now, this is official, there's no confusion about this. If anyone tells you otherwise, they're lying to you. When you submit your application, absolutely a thousand percent matters. So if you're not submitting the first week, you're failing yourself. It's sabotage, why would you, why would you not submit the first week and for those who say it doesn't matter, it does. Because if you think about, if you're in medical school, right, and you have a thousand interviews to give, to give out, right, if someone submits their application the first week and you send back 500 or 800 or 900 interviews, you then only have 100 interviews left that you can give out the rest of the year, are you not gonna scrutinize those more closely? Right, because now you only have 100 key spots to get people in. The other thing is schools might give you more of a benefit of the doubt if you're prepared and you're on time and you're getting it in the first week, they might assume that you're a great student you, you know, taking the time to get everything prepared ahead of time, so give you a better nod. So get your application in early. I've worked with students who had no acceptances when they applied. And of course what they did was they didn't listen to my number one advice is submit early. And so the following year we made sure we had all their stuff in place, their MCAT, what is a rec, their application, they submit it the first week, and then what do you know? They're getting <laughs> interview invites and admissions to all these top schools from zero to 100, like Drake says, right? Zero admissions, 100 admissions. That's where you wanna be, so make sure you submit early. If you didn't do that this year, then you should feel really good about your chances for next year, because that might be the only reason you didn't get in. So that's step two, which is evaluating your application. Step three is not necessarily necessary if you did step two, if you find out one of those things are a big issue, but if step two didn't really identify your problem, then go to step three, and that is actually turning to yourself and seeing who you are as an applicant and why you are a sucky applicant right now. And I said sucky, because if you didn't get in, you suck. <laughs> but you can fix it. So that's what step three is about, is figuring out what you did wrong. And the first part of that is figuring out, okay, well, what are the med school admissions criteria? And a lot of people don't actually know them and never took the time during their undergrad to actually look at what they were until they got to uh, the application. Or they relied on people who are terrible sources. One of the worst sources of information are medical students because they know what they did to get in, but they really don't know why they got in. They you know, submitted their application they got in. So you need to find people who can actually give you quality expert advice. Yeah, me. <laughs> or other people who can tell you exactly what you need to know. In my case, I've broken down the entire med school admissions into six criteria. Six, that's it. If you fill out these six criteria and you do it well, you're gonna get into medical school. When I applied, I had 100% confidence because I knew I had done everything I could in these six areas and I was gonna get in, and I did to Stanford. So that's what you have to do. So I'm gonna do another video about those six criteria and we're gonna really break those down and go through them. Um, but in this video, 
We'll focus on one, and that's the academic part of it. So you're going to go through each of these categories, the six criteria, and you're going to see if there's a red flag there. And if there's not a red flag, what you can do to make yourself even better in that area. So one of the criteria is academic uh, capabilities, capacity, uh, potential. And that starts with, uh, and that's composed of, I'm sorry, that's composed of two things. One is your GPA. The second thing is your MCAT. And so those are the two big ones. Um, as you look at this, you shouldn't look at it as a total thing. You should look at it as two separate entities because GPA takes a long time to fix. You're not going to take four years worth of grades and all of a sudden in a month make those better. But if your MCAT sucks, then that's an easy, quick fix. Study for a couple months, blow the MCAT out of the water, and the next thing you know, you're a great medical school applicant. So figure out, go through each of the criteria, figure out if there's red flags. If there's not, then identify how you can improve each one. So if your MCAT was like a 29 or, you know, see if you can get above 30, see if you can get to 35, whatever it might be. So that's what you do. That's step three. Step four is you find advisors, okay? You have to find people who know the process to advise you. You've now figured out, okay, I've messed this up. To figure out what the next step is, you have to know your options. And to do that, you have to do your own research and become an expert yourself, but you need other people to advise you and tell you what to do. So find those people who you can trust and really rely on to help you through the next part. Step five is actually coming up with a plan. So work with those people, work with your, you know, the research you've done, and figure out, okay, I know that my grades suck, now how am I gonna fix it? If grades are a problem for you, there's basically three or four options. One option is if you haven't graduated yet, you can stay at the university, take more classes, boost your GPA. The second option is if you've already graduated, you can go to community college and boost your GPA. The third option is you can go to a post back program. There's a couple different types of those, and I'll do a video on that, but is a post back right for you? Is community college? Is staying at your school right? All those things are complex questions and those really break down into breaking down your transcript, which is another thing I'm gonna do a video about because that's a whole art and science to itself, but you wanna figure out what is wrong with your transcript, not just the raw GPA. Is it science? Is it non-science? Do I have a trend? All these things factor in and will affect your decision on how you improve your GPA. So that's step five is get your plan together. Step six, okay? The most important step is get to work, right? You can come up with this great plan, you can have all these great ideas, but if you don't put in the work to improve your application, then you're gonna be in the same boat next year. Same exact boat. So when I say, your M so if your MCAT is the problem, right, getting to work, you should be starting to study for your MCAT, come up with a solid plan. So let me take a step back actually about the plan. This brings up a, <laughs> made me think of something. I hear people all the time say, oh, I'm gonna retake the MCAT and get a better score. And people wanna be cheap about their career. So they took a course the first time they took the MCAT and they did poorly on the MCAT. And a lot of these companies will have guarantees where they'll give you your money back or let you retake the course. And so people will go back and retake the same course. How stupid is that? You took the course the first time, your MCAT score was bad, and then you're gonna retake the same exact course and expect a different outcome? Not a good plan. So. <laughs> that just goes into that planning part of it. But then say you have a plan for the MCAT or for whatever it might be, you actually have to get to work. So you gotta put in the time, the dedication, and studying, and that comes from understanding that if medicine is really what you wanna do, you gotta work for it. Nothing comes easy, nothing's handed to you, so get to work, bust it out. If it's the MCAT, you need to be putting in hours and hours and hours a day. You're gonna be studying more than other people because you don't wanna just be average. If you're studying and doing exactly what everyone else is doing, you're gonna have an average score you gotta be doing better, doing more than what they're doing if you wanna score better. So step six is get to work. So let's review all of our steps. Step one, stop having a pity party. Step two, analyze your application. Did you submit on time and did you sell yourself in your application? Step three, what is wrong with you in your six criteria area? What do you have to improve on? Step four is find some advisors to help guide you. Step five is get a good plan together and not repeating the same plan you did last time. <laughs> and step six is getting to work so you can get into medical school. If you do this, you have an excellent chance of getting in. However, sometimes med school is out of the cards for people. And this is important, so don't stop the video yet. Listen to this. Sometimes medical school is out of your reach. That's the flat out truth. And I'll tell people sometimes, and, and people who work with me say, hey Andre, you tell me what I never wanna hear, but it's so, awesome that you tell me this because no one else will tell me this and I'm gonna tell you right now that some people 
have not done what it takes to prepare themselves for medical school and are not ever gonna make it into medical school or are not gonna make it in a timely fashion. If it takes you 15 years after you graduate from undergrad to get into medical school, is that really worth it? Do you wanna spend 15 years doing research, doing whatever to build up your resume? Go do something else, life's too short. So figure out if you are, A, if you're close enough to be able to do it, right? If it's not gonna take you 15 years. And then secondly, figure out if you actually wanna go through it, right? If your research, if you don't have any research on your resume and that's why you think you didn't get in, you gotta spend two years or so doing research. So are you willing to push your whole life back three years? You gotta ask yourself that question because you don't wanna be a year and a half into the research and be like, oh, this is too much and quit then. You might as well quit now and go get a, go get a job so you can get started in that career path. So that's today. Uh, just to kind of close, <laughs> if you didn't get in this year, I'm sorry, but suck it up and hope that you get in next year. And don't leave it just to hope, but hope, be positive, but get to work, figure things out and work hard and you'll get in, all right? so. Again, I'm Dr. Andre Pineset. I'm the pre-med productivity expert. I'm bringing you all the high quality expert advice you need to get into medical school. I'm here, you can see me. I put my name on everything. This is me. This is good quality advice you can trust. So come and get it and get into medical school. You can follow me I'm on Instagram at Dominate Premed. I also stream live a lot on Hang With. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, download the app, it's Hang With. Um, you can get find me on there. I'm also um, dominate pre-med on hang with and I stream live on there. You can comment ask me questions I'll answer your questions on there and reach out to me ask questions. Let me know how things are going. All right, so dr. Andrew Pineset. I am out <laughs>